Hey, what's going on everyone and welcome to another Cinema 4D and Octane tutorial. My name is Nick and I am a graphic designer, motion designer, and today we're going to recreate this toy peg animation that I made on my Instagram and this is going to be a lot of fun and I'm really looking forward to teaching you these techniques. So I'm just like super excited to do this tutorial and the main reason why is because a lot of the projects that I have done, uh, ha I have been using the volume builder and the volume mesher and you could just make some incredible pieces just from those two things. And that's why I'm like really excited to show you because I think you guys are going to make some awesome stuff too and I can't wait to see it. So if you guys have, uh, if you guys have done something from this tutorial, uh, please share it with me by tagging me, nick.creates. I would love to see what you guys make. But without further ado, let's just get started. So I'm gonna go through the settings real quick and just not put a lot of time into it because that's not really important. But it kind of is, but I just wanna like get everything started right away. So I'm just gonna go to path tracing, change this to 800, GI clamp to one. Uh, because we don't really need that much samples anyway. So now I'm going to go to custom settings my, uh, and change some render settings over here. Go to my frame rate to 30 and then change this to all frames because I always forget. Uh, and I think we pretty much put everything together in terms of the settings. So one thing I want to do real quick before I get started is I'm going to bring an HDRI environment to light my scene. So I'm going to uh, bring an octane sky go to my black box and of course I'm gonna bring my artist workshop No, so now we already have light So I'm gonna turn this on so that you guys can see and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring a plane You could also use a floor, but a plane is also fine as well. So I'm gonna put this uh, to 1000 1000 and just change the segments to one and one uh, Real quick. I'm just gonna bring a octane camera real quick and change this to telly so that way we're getting this perspective and i'm just going to zoom in and also go to my composition grid crosshair i think that's pretty much what we need for now and then go to my octane camera tags and go to post processing enable and enable camera imager on so i think pretty much our settings is all good i don't know if i'm missing something but we can always add it but anyway so yeah so i'm really excited to do this because i really love using the volume builder and volume mesher so the first thing we're going to bring is a, a cube and i'm going to shrink it so that way you guys can see so already in our uh live viewer uh we could see the shape uh but let's say if we like bring a volume builder so if we bring a volume builder and put it in there now our shape is gone like you you won't see it in the live viewer and this might scare a lot of people but it's nothing really to worry about uh but if you look at our viewport over here now it's all pixelated and blurry like you don't even see the object you don't even know what this thing is so basically what you want to do uh the reason why it's doing that is because our voxel size is 10. now if we increase uh not increase it but decrease it by one centimeter now we're getting our shape back uh, one thing I also want to do as well is bring some fillet into this. So maybe one. Yeah, I think that's fine. And let's make this uh, 35. Or actually, that's too big. Let's make this uh, 100. And mm, I would say 75. Yeah, so something like that. So I'm gonna try my best to like recreate what I made, but for the most part, I'm just gonna show you my pro my not progress, but my process on how to basically put this together on your own and just kind of show you guys the techniques. So basically right now we can't see anything, but once we start putting our volume measure, now we can see our object. So it, it's now in the viewport and in the uh, live viewer as well. So we could see this thing now here's one thing i want to mention is that when you're adding materials make sure that it's uh separate volume measures because you could only do one measure at a time but i'm going to show you how to do things separately so that you can add separate materials because that's how uh, it pretty much worked 
Uh, you could also play around with the voxel range threshold to get different results. Um, like if you want it like 10% or 35%, you can just mess around with that and get like different results just from this. So I kind of like it at the 40%. Maybe just keep it at uh, 50 for now. Uh, so, all right. So let me show you guys why this thing is so cool and why it's like really important to learn this stuff. So I'm going to bring a cylinder and I'm going to change it to or the orientation to minus X and then make the height segments or actually the rotating uh, the rotating segments to 100. So that way it's a lot smoother. Uh, let's decrease the size and let's bring this to the middle. So I just want to show you guys if I bring this up here. These are both separate objects, but if I bring it to the volume measure, now they are united. So think of it this way. So the volume builder is similar to Illustrator, even though Illustrator, you can kind of do more, but basically you can unionize the shapes, you can subtract the shapes, or you can intersect it, and then you could just basically get the opposite effect from that. So what I'm basically going to do is subtract the shape, but at the same time, I'm also going to change some settings. So a lot of the time when you guys are making something, you might have to like change some settings to get some different results. And I can already tell like this thing is not even on the floor. So what I can do is just bring it over here and now it's looking a little better. So yeah, that's basically what it is. It's uh, you're basically adding onto objects. You're either subtracting or you're adding or you're intersecting and you basically get different results just by doing that. So th this is why this is such a really nifty tool because you could do a lot of cool things with it. And I just love using these things. Like you, you guys have no idea how much I love this thing. Um, I think you guys can already tell. So I think we already made our base foundation for uh, our base. So I'm going to go and call this base. Now, we're pretty much going to focus on the inside now. So what I can do is just basically make a copy of this and call this center. And the first thing I'm going to do is obviously bring this in. Now, you probably don't see it. It's because the cylinder is overlapping the uh, cube. So if I bring this upwards, now you're starting to see a different shape. So something like this. Uh, so what I'm going to also do as well is make this 15 and then bring this down. And now you're starting to see something. Now I'm also going to bring this up as well. So that way we could get uh, this geometry over here. So that way we can start making the, uh, the pegs. Uh, I guess I can just bring this inwards. and get something like this. So now this is pretty much the rough idea. And if you want to bring this even more higher, you could do that. Just make sure that it's not deleting because you see uh, the cylinder is now no longer overlapping that. So, or it's just above it and you can't really like delete it. So just make sure that you can see what's going on. So that's why you got to go in between these two. But basically now these are both separate um, pieces now what you can do as well is you could get another volume uh builder put it into the mesher yeah you can have multiple volume builders that's why i love this thing like you can put cloners you could put uh extrusions you could pretty much do whatever and that's why i love this thing and so what i'm gonna do is basically i'm going to create another cylinder and decrease the size. I'm gonna fix the camera stuff later. Uh, I guess I could just get out of it for now so I can see a little better. Uh, go to the cylinder, change this to minus X, bring this upwards, decrease the size, and let's make this three, and let's make this also 20, so then we can create our hole. And what I'm gonna do is basically go over here, and subtract. So now, as you can see, as we're doing that, you can see we're subtracting. Now, this looks kind of weird. And the reason why it's because you can lower the voxel and get a more definite shape. But just remember, guys, that the more you bring this down, uh, this is going to 
possibly crash your computer. So just be on the lookout. I would recommend you guys keep it at like one. One is totally fine. Uh, but yeah, you can totally mess around with this stuff and like get a bunch of good results just from that. One thing to also help to kind of align this better is enabling the snap tool and go to uh, grid and just align it like that. And now for some reason, I don't know why. In, okay, so in this angle, it looks off, but it, it's actually straight. So cool. So now, oops. So now we got <laughs> our peg hole. And so I'm going to call this. So, so another thing to kind of like know what subtracting is like cylinder minus. This one is also cylinder minus and then cube and you can call this parent so that's something to kind of like organize a little better so like you can call this cube parent and then cylinder minus so you can do it like that and then you can just make it or you could call this mini cylinder mini cylinder and then make a copy of this call this two and then go over here well that's not what I want to do make sure to also make the subtract so see now you can subtract it and just want to make sure that I'm doing this correctly okay cool now what I can do is take these these two over here and bring them out so now we got our pegs now our pegs can probably be a lot smaller so something like this you could also do it at the same time so let's make it like that and also make them two or maybe 2.5 something like that so like you guys can see it and then we can just like bring those in so that way it's like hiding sort of And if you want, if you want to hide it even more, you can just bring this even further and do the same thing with this one as well and just bring it back a little more. So now it's inside. Okay, cool. Now, another thing you guys can also do if you want to make this a lot smoother is if you go to, we probably might not need this anymore. If you go over here and you go to SDF smooth, you can bring this up here and see now everything is starting to smooth out. But if you don't want it that smooth, you can just decrease it just like that. So somewhere around the 50% area looks good to me. And I think I am fine with that. Just be careful of the um, of this going on. What you could also do as well is if you want, you can just uh, increase the height of this. right or you can basically make it not visible so over here looks fine but if I go over here now it's pretty much gone so all fine and dandy so now we pretty much made our toy obstacle or whatever you want to call it this peg machine and uh, now this is where the fun part begins uh, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to animate the pegs, but um, before I do the pegs, I'm going to make a sphere. So let's bring a sphere, bring this here. Now I just want to see from this angle, because I don't know how big the ball is going to be, but I just want to make it as big as big enough. So I think like something like that size is fine. the radius okay I guess we can make it 10 and then let's also make it a uh, hemisphere so like one half will be like wood and then the other half will be like uh, steel so then we can make another copy uh, make, make it uh, go rotate 90 degrees or actually 180 so 180 and then make this uh, 
put this in a null and call it ball. Let's call it sphere bottom and sphere top. Cool. I know a lot of my stuff is like lowercase and and all that stuff, but uh, usually when I have like stuff like this that are um, like group like this, that would be like the capitalized, but everything else could be different. Okay, so now I got my ball. Now, I also want to take the chance to increase the segments. So let's increase it by 100 to make this thing really nice and smooth. Uh, and I'm going to go in this uh, top viewpoint and I'm going to bring a, a pen tool. Now, the good thing is we already turned on enable snap. So what we can do is just basically just make a line just like that. And let's see if we can make a perfect line. So something like that. And once you're done, you could just press space and you pretty much got your line. Now I call this the drive. And the reason why is because we're going to drive this ball from right to left. And that's what we're going to do. So one thing I'm going to do is uh, bring in a, where is it? Animation tags align to spline and because this is a spline you can drag the drive or spline into this and now you can see that now it's aligned with the spline now just before we do anything make sure this is selected polygon mode and just bring this upwards you could also edit the spline as well and make changes so like for example if it's like too big uh, you could just bring this over here And then if we go to our position here, let's see if it goes. Okay, that's a little too far. But like I said, you guys can make adjustments, make this bigger. Uh, you guys can pretty much do whatever you want with that. And I'm starting to think like this is way too big for the center. So what I'm going to do is make this 9. And then bring the spline. upwards so we could center this a little better I'm gonna try not to take a lot of time to like um, perfect this because it does take some time but for the most part like this is generally what we're trying to go for so let's go to position zero and let's see something okay this is good so the first thing we're gonna do is set a keyframe over here on the on the zero on zero frames and then go all the way to the end go to the last position or actually i'm going to go to 50 then go to 100 and then take it back to zero because basically we're going from right to left right so this thing is going to hit the ball and then that's going to hit the ball uh okay so now if i start playing this thing if i go to my camera over here Maybe change the angle. Now you can start to see that the ball is going right to left. Okay, now the thing is to kind of see it rotating a little better because we are going to make this rotate. So I'm going to go to my ball, go to the, the R.B, and I'm going to make this zero and make this 720. And I'm going to see how that comes out. We could always change the key value. So basically because this is going from right to left, uh, it's best to basically bring this to the middle. So now if I go to my animation show F curve, I can make a copy of this actually. So let's make a copy of this and bring it to... One hundred. So now we'll get something like this. I don't know what that is. And the key value of that is going to be seven twenty. And then, actually, no, this is going to be zero. So we're going to make this zero, 
And now, if I start playing this... See, okay, so I probably deleted the movement, but that's okay. We can easily just do that. So, uh, let me see over here. Just go to show F curve. Oh, not this. See here, so go to... Yeah, so we're going to do that and then make a copy of this. And the key time is going to be... Make this 100. And the key value is going to be 0. So then you have something like this. Can't really see it well, but... Let's just check it out. So now you're going to get something like that, where it's basically rotating. And that's pretty good. Now you could keep it on an S curve, or you can make this into a, a more linear curve. So you could just basically, uh, I never, I never figured out how to basically see the whole thing. Oh, okay. I could do this. Cool. So. Okay, so yeah, so you can make this into an F curve, and then you'll get something like this. So yeah, that's one way to go about it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, uh, let's check, let's check, let's check. Uh, go to positions real quick. I just want to check something. And you can also make that, oh, I already made that. <laughs> Whoops. I meant to say, let's make this you can make this linear and then let's see how that looks yeah so so far so good so now we're gonna basically start making the pegs go from right to left so what i do is do it in 10 uh 10 frames each so let's say if i go here right so i'm gonna go to uh, my front viewport Let's see. We can also call this right. Or this would be the left, technically. So let's call this left. And then this is right. I didn't even spell it right. Oh, I did spell it right. Okay. I'm, I'm bugging. Sorry, guys. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so we're, we're good. So now, uh, let's see, uh, let's go to left. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from frame zero. So I'm going to make my first key frame and we're going to do it in the X axis. So let's make this negative 17 just to make it accurate. So let's go from zero and then we can make it at, I think 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then boom. And then at 20, we can go back to negative 17. So then you're going to get something like this. Boom. You see? So that's the first one. And then we can also do the same thing for this one as well. Let's make the 60 go over here. I'm going to go to basically where the ball pretty much ends up here. And then around 50, which is the perfect timing, I'm going to set a keyframe for that one, go to 60, and then make this, whoops, let's make this 50, All right? So let's make that 50, uh, set that over here, and then make another keyframe going back to 60. So it's basically going back. To its little hole okay so if we see it from this angle then you'll get something like this pretty cool huh so that's how i pretty much made my animation uh you can also like you know view it in this angle just want to set it up correctly also what you could do is bring this back and then you can see it better. And that's pretty much it. I mean, this is a pretty easy tutorial. 
And if I go over here to my F curves and I want to make it instead of this and make it like linear, you can also do that as well and you'll get like a different result. But if I want to see this faster, if I want to, if I want to see this a lot quicker, that's basically how you can check it out as well. So you can, you guys can really go uh, any way about it. I probably had some S curves in my other project that I made. And essentially, that's pretty much how I made this uh, toy peg machine or whatever you want to call it. So I guess now it's the time to kind of conclude this. But before I do that, I'm just going to show you the materials. So I'm going to merge projects and I'm going to bring in. Um, well, actually, I should have just loaded this stuff. So what I'm going to do. That was kind of dumb, my fault. Uh, just load my materials over here. And I'm just going to bring everything together just so you guys can kind of see uh, what was my process. And now you can see because I had separate measures, you're going to get um, basically uh, different results. Uh, now it's probably a little dim. It's because the HDRI that I'm currently using, I, I played around with some settings. So I brightened this up. I also uh, brought this to eight. So then we're getting sunlight from over here. And then in the center, uh, I pretty much brought this in the middle. So then you're just going to get something like this. And then uh, basically I just colored the wood, the pegs over here. I actually made it this one and this one so then if I play that's what you're gonna get uh, and then for the sphere top I started with I think it was this one and then the silver one is on the bottom and that's pretty much how I made it uh, one other thing that I did to kind of lighten this thing up a little bit is um, I brought in so a lot of, uh, so the main reason why I don't have my shortcuts here is because I have the new um, R23 over here. Well, uh, you know, R24 is out, but I got R23. So I, I didn't have the chance to pretty much do my shortcuts. So that's why I'm doing it in the non-conventional way. But you can pretty much bring an area light or octane area light. Uh, I can go back here, bring this upwards, and then point it to this direction. Uh, another thing that you can do is turn off the surf surface brightness and then if I go over here now you're gonna get a, a better lit uh, you know uh, viewport over here and I just set it to like 50 I don't want to do anything too crazy and then you can increase this by 1.4 or even 2 if you want to go crazy but that's basically it just a quick thing that I forgot to mention in this tutorial if you want to make this loop uh, loop smoothly, you can just basically make this from 100 frames to 99. Now, if you just look at the viewport over here, you can see that it's basically going on a loop. Now, if you add that 100, now you can see that it's kind of, kind of doing that, but it's better to just put it at 99 so that it can just smoothly transition. Okay, back to the... Uh, to the textures see ya and so just real quick i just want to show you the material that i'm using so basically a lot of these materials i'm not gonna lie is from grayscale gorilla so like you can make your own steel materials or you can find some online or you can even go to quicksoul over here and you can find some really cool uh steel materials from over here and there's not really a lot that's going on other than the fact that there's some normal maps there's some rgb stuff um, yeah, I just used Grayscale Gorilla stuff. And then for the wood, I just basically uh, took this from Grayscale Gorilla, but I added my own um, textures to it. Because originally, uh, this doesn't have any scratch surfaces. So one thing that I like to do in my pieces is add a lot of imperfection, especially for this particular piece, just to show that it's like real or show some realism to it. So yeah, so I just added the imperfection from uh, Grayscale Gorilla and I played around with the transform value and the texture projection to kind of get different results and setting this to box. And then uh, for this one, it's very similar as well. Uh, this is a different texture projection or they're not really that different. 
So I kind of play around with different types of wood just to give it a variety. And then for this one, I just added some color to it. So there's some color correction. And basically I played around with uh, these settings on the diffuse channel and basically got that red wood. And that's how I pretty much got that. And this was something that I was playing around with. But for the most part, a lot of this stuff is, is pretty self-explanatory. There's There really isn't a lot of crazy things that, that are happening, but that's pretty much it. So um, I hope you guys learned something from this. Uh, I had a lot of fun making this tutorial, especially how fun, uh, how fun it is to use the volume builder and the volume mesher. And I really look forward to see what you guys make. So remember what I said to, um, you know, tag me on Instagram, nick.creates and I really look forward to see what you guys make. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Take care.